all right hopefully this is in freaking frame anyways so this is the basic overview of the upcoming project which is theoretically going to be a flexible three plus plate um ideally we have stop this because this is like the highest thread that I can test with. So maybe I'll make two plates and send one off to like Buffman Range or something. Some other YouTuber that has more guns than me. Anyways, this is the basic overview of the plate. I'm going to have grade five titanium, alumina, ceramic, strike face, more grade 5 titanium and a 3A backer. We're going to, this is, we're going to, this is, come on, bruh. Frick off. This is the basic design to make the plate flexible. We have a grid like pattern that allows the plate to flex. The idea is to have smaller pieces up front and then bigger pieces in the back so the seams don't line up. And that way, no matter where you hit, you're going to hit some material. Yeah. So up front, we're going to have two layers of grade five titanium. The layer thickness is 0 0.071 inches. So with two layers, it's gonna come out to 0.1422 or a little bit over an eighth of an inch. Behind that is going to be quarter inch alumina ceramic hexagons. This is just a porcelain reference so you can get an image of the thickness. This is a little bit more at 0.30, but you get the point. That's going to go behind this. And behind that is going to be a single layer of grade 5 titanium at 0 0.071 inches or a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch. And then finally a 3A backer, which is probably going to be, I don't know, 22 layers of UHMWPE and six layers of Kevlar. Something like that. The final thickness is going to come out at around 0.69, at least for the armor portion. I have to do a spall coating or frag coating or just a carrier to put everything in. And that's gonna bump it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'll throw up some pictures of this up against my chest so you can get an idea of what it might look like. Although it doesn't show any flexibility because I can with this stupid ceramic being one piece. But I mean, there's a lot of flexibility in this design. I mean, I can literally freaking I can just, I can completely fold these in both directions and diagonally. So you get the point, pretty flexible. And you know, with the hexagons being hexagons, they're gonna be flexible as well. It's basically the same principle with this, but instead of squares, it's hexagons. And then the 3A backer is just, you know, UHMWPE fabric. It's flexible, it's already flexible. So ideally, theoretically, this design should be pretty flexible. I'm not sure on weight, but I think a 10 by 12 should come out at around six pounds, maybe a little bit more. I think the titanium is the heaviest part, honestly. I, I don't even know. I think it's like four pounds or something in the ceramic is two 
and this stuff is always light it's probably like not even half a pound but let's just assume it is so probably six and a half pounds which is 13 pounds if you have a front plate and a back plate which is I don't know I'd say it's a lot but I don't actually know if it is because I, I mean I have 10 pound dumbbells that I, I've held up to my chest and honestly it doesn't seem like it'd be that bad but maybe if we're wearing this for a long period of time it might be but yeah the the main downside to this is going to be its thickness but I'm thinking the flexibility you know can get past that the concealability portion of a plate honestly comes down to its flexibility. The more flexible it is, you know, the less the thickness really matters because what it really comes down to is just it being a, a awkward, you know, sight to see and it being noticeable. Like if, I, if I'm wearing a freaking rectangle a flat rectangle under my shirt, you know, people are going to see that obviously because it just doesn't make sense. That's not the anatomy of a chest. So if you can get it to flex, you need know, match the anatomy of a chest. It's going to be a hundred percent less noticeable. I don't know about a hundred percent, but <laughs> it's definitely going to be less noticeable. So yeah, the thickness doesn't even really matter that much, honestly, in my opinion. I guess we'll see once we put it together, but I'm thinking it's not going to matter that much, especially if you wear like a loose shirt, like even just like a flannel over it. You probably won't see it that much. And then if you wear something else on top of that, like a freaking a thin jacket or something, no one's no, no one's going to know nothing. So really thickness isn't even the downside to this. The really only downside is just seeing what threads it can stop. I'm hoping that it is three plus, but I'm honestly not sure if this ceramic is thick enough. Quarter inch. I mean, a lot of the armor teardowns I've seen Usually they go for that 30, that 0.30 to 0.40 mark, but I'm hoping the titanium can make up for that. Even though the titanium is nowhere near as hard, but if it can at least do something or improve the capabilities of the ceramic, then, you know, it might be able to be three plus. And if you're wondering why I'm doing the titanium up front of the ceramic, um, the answer is I'm not really sure. Uh, I read a research paper that said it improved the capabilities of a plate. So I'll put that paper up there, but I'm not even really sure I understood the paper. I mean, I think I, I got it basically, but it, it says something about a metal backed ceramic, but then it said something about a strike face. So I'm not sure if the metal is supposed to, it said like a, not a strike face, but a cover plate, I think is the word they used. But then it said metal backed. So I'm not sure if there's supposed to be stuff behind it and in front of it, or if it's just supposed to be in front of it, but to be safe, I put the titanium in the front and behind it. So it's a metal backed ceramic with a cover plate. So <laughs> hopefully that covers all scenarios, I guess, for the paper and will either improve the capabilities of the ceramic by, you know, blunting the round before it even reaches the ceramic or just by helping to keep the ceramic um, together better because it's going to be bonded between two materials. But I'm thinking that if it hits this, it's going to shatter this ceramic before the bullet even hits it. But maybe not because 
obviously this is going really fast so it might not even have like time to be able to do that but yeah i'll throw up the paper you guys can read it if you want see if this makes sense or not but this is the basic idea behind the plate a bunch of little squares and hexagons to make it flexible and you know theoretically lightweight and strong materials so hopefully this works out i just have to order the materials which are hella expensive so i made a patreon it's five dollars a month if you want to help support this project it's mainly just for this project or any future really expensive projects this project is like three hundred dollars for some reason i can't find the ceramic like not in bulk or hella expensive i tried finding silicon carbide or boron carbide hexagons they're like 50 dollars a hexagon literally a two inch by two inch hexagon 50 dollars and i need 120 or no i need 60 because they have two inches i need 60 hexagons for a 10 by 12. literally like what i'm not spending three thousand dollars on a, like it just doesn't make any sense so 150 dollars was literally the best deal on planet earth i could find for some alumina hexagons and then the titanium is a hundred dollars so yeah it's just hella expensive for no reason so if you want to help me out with just basically this one project just do the five dollars a month for literally one month and then cancel it but if you want to continue to support that would be amazing um but yeah that's really all there is to it the next project just have to order the materials and then put it together so i'll see you when i have all the materials